السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال سبحانه وتعالى فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا صدق الله المولان العظيم as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came closer to his last part of his life, then the Lord Almighty wanted to give him a ishara, give him a hint that, O oh, beloved Prophet, you're going to move on from the world now. Because he had great success in his nubuwat, in his tabligh, in his prophethood, in, in his, his da'wah to mankind, he was reaching a very good level where it looked stable. And people were coming into the, re the religion. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when you start seeing people coming into the religion in large numbers, then فَسَبِّحْ Then do tasbih. Tasbih means subhanallah. So فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ And then also add with that Alhamdulillah. So do subhanallahs and alhamdulillahs. وَاسْتَغْفِرْ And do astaghfirullahs. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oft forgiving. So, we learn that even the greatest of mankind, they needed to prepare for Akhirah. Because no matter how hard we try as humans, our best try is not that special, it's still not perfect. So if I try 100% to pray my Jummah Salat nicely, it still is petty. It still is not a highest quality because my brain gets distracted like a child's brain. Although as mature as we might think we are, we're middle-aged, seniors and so on, but our minds are still wandering like children's minds. So let's be honest with ourselves. As humans, we're easily distracted. So that is the case not with the Jummah Salat. That was the case with our whole life. Our whole life was a distraction. Sometimes it's when you were younger, it was nice clothing. The Quran talks about this in a beautiful way, that life is basically playing, then beautification, then collecting of wealth, and the properties, and then it mentions having children and more offspring. So in that ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us our distractions based on our age group. So children play games, and the Quran calls it two different types of games. Lahun wa laibun. Very useless games, and somewhat physical games. So even sports are two types. One is a very useless sport, where you're doing nothing basically, there's not that much health benefit to it. And then there's sports where there's more benefit. And likewise with games that have very little benefit in even a worldly sense. Once Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi saw some kids playing with uh, rocks. And it's a little, little silly game, you're hitting rocks. But it's not powerful enough to give you a real power. You can't hunt a bird with it if you are hungry. And you can't ward off your enemies if somebody was to attack you. All it can do is give you eye injuries. The biggest benefit it can give you is an eye injury. So Nabi Sallallahu said it's not a good sport, there's no benefit to it. So those are some sports where the benefit is almost nothing. For example, playing cards. You're just sitting there, your, your cardiovascular energy is not getting any better. And you're just sitting there, looking at numbers. And they're not high numbers where you're doing extreme math. So it's not good for your mathematical skills, and it's not good, good for your physical skills. So that is the first stage of life, useless sports and somewhat beneficial sports. And even the beneficial sports, 
they're beneficial when you play them, not when you watch them. So if, if it's a physical sport like soccer, basketball, volleyball, they're a sport, they're a good sports if you play it, not if you sit there and watch it for hours. Many times we watch sports, we think it's a good sport, let me watch it, it's very healthy. It's healthy for the person playing it, not for you, you're just sitting there eating chips. That's not healthy for you. The person playing the sport is extremely healthy. You are not extremely healthy by watching that extremely healthy person. Big difference in perspective. So you can watch all the sports you want. You're not gonna become athletic until you get up and start walking. Many of us can't even park upstairs or park in the next plaza because it's a long walk. So everybody squishes, even when the parking lot is full. This brother squeezing in extra cars, why? because they don't want to take 30 steps from the next plaza to this plaza. Or from Home Depot to here, no, 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 that's 100 steps. You might get a heart attack. So that's how unhealthy we are as humans, we hate walking. Absolutely hate walking. We think walking is like a disgrace. If you're walking, oh, you have no car? You can take a walk, it's not gonna hurt you. Some hadith even mentioned for Juma, you should try to walk. So anyways, that was the first part of life. The second part is beautification, when you're always looking in the mirror. Looking in the mirror, fix this, fix that, fix this, fix that, spending hours in it. Go ahead, please. So always looking in the mirror and b being distracted by looks, by clothing. And thanks to our situation right now, the world is becoming so materialistic, it's all about clothing, even when you're 50 and 60, people are still just looking at their clothes. That doesn't mean in Islam we are encouraged to wear bad quality clothing. Islam wants us to wear our best for Jumu'ah, for every occasion, be dressed nicely. Hudhu zinatakum. Go and get your zina. go get your beauty. The Quran talks about it clearly. Go get your beauty, go dress nicely. Hudhu zinatakum in the kulli masjid. So every Salat, we should be dressed properly, even for Fajr Salat. If you're dressed very bad for your Fajr Salat, it's not nice. Try your best not to be dressed in bad quality clothing for Fajr Salat. Try to have something long that can cover you, you look nice. Otherwise, don't play with your shorts or just a towel, it's, it's not nice. The Hadith mentions is very, like very bad quality to pray in front of Allah in a situation where you won't leave the house like that. If you won't go to a party with that clothing, try your best not to pray salat with that clothing. If you can't come to the masjid with that clothing, try your best not to pray salat in that clothing. Although salat will be done, but it's a very, you're giving Allah bad quality, you're giving your parties good quality. So try your best to balance it out. So religion does want us to dress properly, but don't make it the focus of your life. Where, for example, the younger kids, if your brain is stuck on the next LeBron James shoes or whatever shoes, or Curry, Steph Curry, Stephen Curry shoes, that means you're dreaming too much. If you're stuck on Ronaldo's shoes, that's too much. You're dreaming about that clothing. If you just buy it, buy it. But don't dream about it. Don't take pictures every second and put it on Facebook and whatever other websites. If you're constantly taking pictures, that means something is wrong, you're showing off with it. So that was the second stage of life, showing off with beauty and so on. Then the third stage is collecting money, and that was that is mostly our stage nowadays. Everybody's just thinking money, money, money. It's like a computer on a fixed default system where it's always about money. Somebody could be dying in your family and we're still thinking about money. Somebody could be losing Iman, in our family, and we're stuck on money. Somebody could be, anything could be happening, but our brain is stuck on one thought, more money. And that's all we have in our mind. And many times a person is confused, like what does Islam want from me? Does, does Islam want me to make so much money? Do I have to do halal earnings, or do I not? That's a big confusion. Do we, are we supposed to be working really, really hard, making a lot of money, or should we be lazy? There's a middle path in between. There's a middle path in between. And just want to give, a, there's a book on this called Rethink Your World. Rethink Your World by Sheikh Umar Subedar. 
and we're going to start doing dars on that on Thursdays. So Thursdays after Asr Salats. We have a dars here at the back and we talk about these topics and other important topics. So we're studying three books inshallah. One is a spirituality purification book of Ibn Ataullah Iskandari, Al-Hikam, if you know that book, Al-Hikam. Then the second book we are studying is the book on balancing our worldly life. And the third one is a book on fiqh, how to practice our salat, zakat, fasting, and hajj, how to do it properly. Because unfortunately, we think we know fiqh, we think we know masail, but as soon as a small thing happens, everybody's stumped. For example, I miss an ayat today in salat. For example, if I miss one ayat in salat, many of you must be thinking, oh, the mullah sab, he missed one, one ayat, our namaz doesn't count. And that's not the rule. I can miss 10 ayats, it doesn't break the salat. As long as I read three ayats after Fatiha, so سَبِّحْ اسْمَ رَبِّكَ لَعْلَىٰ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَ فَسَوَّىٰ وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَىٰ My namaz is done. After that, if I, if I skip 10 ayats because I was confused, the namaz is done, why are you confused? I, finish, I didn't finish the surah, you're right. But the namaz is done. So many of us, we don't even know this basic masala. So you'll see a big commotion after salat if the imam missed one ayat and there'll be 10 people thinking, SubhanAllah, our namaz didn't count, Juma namaz didn't count. You're like, brother, go read a book, man. Pick up a kid's book, fiqh. Read five. Read five, fiqh book, he'll tell you this masala, but many of us don't know. So we're gonna attack the imam and say, no, you destroyed our salat, although he didn't, he just missed one ayat or whatever. But why does that happen? Why do we have such big problems? Because we don't know the ABCs of our fiqh. We don't know the ABCs, and we think we're very religious. Because we prayed salat for 10 years, 40 years, so we think we're very religious, but the fiqh is zero. We don't know any details of our salats. And that's why many people are doing such the sahu after salat. And they made a small mistake, there's no such a sahu for small mistakes. For a bigger mistake, medium-sized mistake, you do such a sahu. In a big mistake, you can't do such a sahu, you have to repeat the salat. So there's small mistakes, medium mistakes, and large mistakes. For large mistakes, you can't fix it. You have to repeat the salat. With a medium mistake, you can do such a sahu. And for the small mistakes, there's no sahu, it's fine. You don't have to do such a sahu, it's fine. Your salat is okay. So most of us don't know the details. Like right now, I gave you a general rule. But how do you know the mistake you made is a medium-sized mistake or a small mistake? You have to be fiqh. So we're going to do all those three books Thursdays after Asr. Asr Salat is at 7 o'clock. So if you come in 45 minutes, inshallah, we'll try to finish. We'll study three books. So please try your best to join. So anyways, I go back to the topic of balancing our money making. You can make money, you can spend time on it. Don't kill your spiritual iman and don't kill your physical body and don't kill your social life. If those three are suffering, something is wrong with your work schedule. If your wife has no time with you, for some reason many Muslim men, we think wife, it's okay, she do suffer. We only care about our kids. Many men, they say, my wife, sabr, sabr, inshallah. Jannat, jannat. It doesn't work like that. You can't keep throwing your wife under the bus. In English, they say, throw under the bus, meaning don't care about her. You can't do that forever. Maybe one year, two years, 10 years, 15 years, she did sabr. How much sabr do you want from your wife? So spending time with the wife, we don't even know what that is. Many of us, we don't know what that is. We just, inshallah, we pay bills, pay bills, pay mortgage, pay mortgage, and that's it. No time for family. So, number, so I mentioned three things. If those three things are affected by your work, think about your work again. Number one is fam I mentioned family just for emotional purposes. Otherwise, number one would be iman. If your salat is always missed, you're missing all your salats, you have no time for Quran reading, you don't even know how to read Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen properly, then I'm sorry you're working a lot of halal money, but you don't even know your Fatiha properly. So your, salat, your work is halal. But you don't have no time for Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen to fix it. You're reading it like a child. You're making mistakes when you were 10 year old, you're making the same mistakes. So if your namaz is affected, your other worships are affected, that's a problem. And the last one is even your health. We think health is free, 
money is valuable. That's how our silly brains work. We think money is very valuable, health is not. Please try to understand, if your work is destroying your health, one day it's gonna happen where you can't go to work the next morning because your health finished. You had a nervous breakdown, you had a depression, you had a heart attack. Why? Because you want to work every day, you have no time to go for a walk, for a job. You're thinking money, one hour, I can go for a job or I can stay at work for one more hour. I go stay at work, work one more hour. Go for a jog. You'll be able to work for longer in your life if you go do a little bit of sprint. running. Sahaba did foot racing. Do you understand that? Sahaba the one who had a foot races. Sometimes. They had horse races sometimes. Car racing doesn't help. Because car racing, the car is getting exercise, you're not getting exercise. So if you do car racing, it doesn't, it's not going to help your health. Horse racing will help your health and running will help your health. So those three things, if they're affected by your work, then you need to reconsider your work. Your Iman being affected, your family life being affected, or your health being affected. If you can keep a balance, I know a balance is really hard. Only the best of us have a balance. The rest of us, we're just trying our best. I know nobody has perfection. One day you're doing more work, less family. One day you're doing too much family, you're missing salat. You're going to your friend's birthday, kid's birthday party, you miss two salats. So what kind of a balance is that? You went to somebody's birthday party, but then you missed all the salats that day. So you helped your social life and your emotional life, but you destroyed your iman part. You went to somebody's wedding, but you're listening to five hours of music. So balance it out. It's gonna be hard because only when you're very understanding, you're able to balance these things. So keep thinking. I was talking to a brother here, he asked Sheikh, there's, some, there's a family member of mine, they're having a wedding, but there will be too much music, what do I do? I said, just tell them, tell them I cannot come. And then he was stressed, and then he tried his best, he didn't listen, then he didn't go, and then he told me, Alhamdulillah, after one year, everybody understands why I didn't go, nobody has problems with me, they fully understand me. And then the, he mentioned another brother, who went to that wedding, he was a religious guy, but he went to that wedding, and this suffer. So they say he became a joke because everybody said, why is he here? He's so religious. But he still came and now he sat all the way at the back by the washrooms and he thought that was going to help but then he, he made more confusion. By coming to a wedding that had music, he caused more confusion because he's a religious guy. Why is he here? So he was all more, people were more confused by his behavior than the other brother who I told him, don't go. It's okay, don't go. It's not personal hate. You don't hate them. You just said, I don't want to go to a wedding for six hours. Uh, listening to music, I don't want to do that. So he says everything is fine now, they understand me and everybody has a good understanding of what's happening in our Muslim marriages, we need to fix it. So that is the, the stages of life and the last stage of life is competing with how much kids we have. So we keep asking brother, how many kids do you have? How many grandchildren do you have? It's a really rough question. If you're very close to someone, you can ask that question. If it's first day meeting someone, don't ask them if they have kids. Maybe they don't want to have kids because their life is too difficult. Maybe the young couple, they went away for four or five years. Maybe the man has health issues. Maybe the woman has health issues. They can't have children. So when you ask that question, you're hurting people. You say, no, I had a good intention. No, you didn't have a good intention. And if you're gonna ask, don't ask in front of three, four, five, six people, ask alone. If you care about somebody's children, ask when you're one-on-one. -on -one. Don't ask in front of 50 people, oh dear, how many children do you have? So these are the considerations of, of different parts of our life and we need to try to our best to focus on our deen in all these stages. Whether you're playing sports, in your young child, you're a teenager, you're all into sports, think about religion. If you're all into your middle age when you're beautifying all the time, still think of how much are you dressing badly or are you dressing Islamic. If you're wearing tight jeans because of fashion statements, that's not Islamic. If your behind is showing through your tight jeans, that's not Islamic clothing at all. Men and women have to cover their bodies properly, especially this area. If you're wearing tight jeans, I'm sorry, and many brothers, they sit down, as soon as they do this, bend over a little bit, their back is showing. And I'm sorry, the underwear is showing too. Many brothers just move over, move a little bit, the back is showing you like subhanAllah, how can I pray behind this guy? He moves and I see his internal hardware. Like, 
you have to cover up. If you're wearing tiny, tiny shirts because that's the only shirt they sell in the store, maybe buy a bigger size so you can cover your behind. So may Allah SWT give us Sufi to understand the beauty of our religion. May Allah uh, forgive us for all the sins that we make in different parts of our life. And may Allah constantly guide us and forgive us for all of our sins. Allahu Akbar Allah.